Hey, welcome to Adex World and another video in the IGCSE accounting series. The entire syllabus of the IGCSE accounting has already been covered. You can find all the videos in the playlist. Using these videos, I'm trying to solve examples and trying to cover as many as possible adjustments for various topics. So I hope you're liking them. I hope you are learning from them. Today's video is going to be on accounting ratios. This is one topic where students get confused. They think it is difficult. They are not very confident. They might be able to calculate the ratios because remembering the formula and calculating the ratios is still simple, but analyzing the ratios, understanding the reasons for differences in the ratios is little tricky, but it's not difficult. If you understand the numerator and the denominator of all the ratios and you understand how it has changed between two years or how it is different for two businesses, you can analyze it and you can do well in the exam in this chapter. If you want to study this chapter in detail, I would suggest watching my video on accounting ratios in the playlist. I will be providing the link in the description box. You can check that video. Once you've learned the different types of ratios and the analysis that can be done from the ratios from that video, then come back to this video. So when I'll be showing you the question for this video, I would expect you to pause this video, solve the question on your own, then go ahead and resume, check the answer, understand my way of thinking about the question, understand the way I analyze the question and the ratios, and then see where you can improve as far as the exam is concerned. So the question that we have here is Mr. X has provided the following information, inventory, opening balance is given, then transactions for the year, expenses and revenues are given, and then certain closing balances are given. And then at the end, also the information about Mr. X using a markup of 25% is given. Markup is the gross profit as a percentage of cost or cost of sales. 25%, if we have to calculate eight ratios. And then at the end, we need to analyze and write down the differences for three ratios. So we will be calculating certain ratios. Those ratios we will be comparing with the given ratios for gross profit ratio, rate of inventory turnover and quick ratio, and then see what could be the possible differences for these changes in ratios. So let's begin this by calculating the first value that is required cost of sales. See cost of sales usually can be calculated as opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. I have the opening stock. I have the closing stock, closing inventory, but I don't have the purchases. So definitely you cannot use that formula to calculate the cost of sales. Another way to calculate cost of sales is revenues or sales minus the gross profit. Revenues are given, but gross profit is not given in numbers, in absolute numbers. But I do have an information where the question says that Mr. X uses a markup of 25%. This is a useful information and can be used to arrive at the gross profit and the cost of sales. But another problem here is that markup is given and markup is expressed as cost of sales, gross profit as a percentage of cost of sales, which is 25%. But since I don't know the cost of sales itself, I cannot directly calculate the gross profit. So what I'll do here is I'll assume that let the cost uh, be 100. You could use values like cost be X. That's also possible. You could use any values. We just need to use some arithmetical calculations to arrive at the gross profit and cost of sales. I've assumed 100. So when the cost is 100, markup is 25% of cost. So it is obvious that the gross profit would be 25. And when the cost is 100, the gross profit is 25. Revenue or the selling price would obviously be cost plus gross profit 125. Now in this case, the revenues are given as 240,000. So, and I'm interested in calculating the cost of sales. So let me put the value of X in place of cost of sales. Now I can equate, or in other words, I can cross multiply and arrive at the cost of sales. So my cost of sales, which is assumed as X here would be 240,000 multiplied by hundred divided by 125. If you calculate, you would get 192,000. I hope the way I've done it is simple. You find it simple. Else you could also use X, wherein you say cost B X, gross profit is 0.25 X, sales is 1.25 X, equate that with 240,000, calculate the value of X, you would get the same answer. 
If you want me to explain this calculation of cost of sales using X in detail, just put down a comment below and I'll put down a detailed description or a detailed explanation of this method of using X to find out the cost of sales. So we've calculated our cost of sales, completed a part A. Then we have to calculate a profit for the year. Profit in the sense net profit. For you, you know that net for net profit you need the gross profit and you need the expenses. Expenses are given as 35,000, but we don't have the gross profit directly, but we have the revenues and we've calculated our cost of sales just in part A. We can calculate the gross profit first, then calculate the net profit. So the gross profit would be revenues minus our cost of sales calculated in part A. So 240,000 minus 192,000, which gives us 40. 8,000. That's the gross profit. Now, if I deduct expenses from the gross profit, so 48,000 minus 35,000 expenses, I would get the net profit, which is 13,000. Next, we need to calculate our gross profit margin. You know the formula for gross profit margin. Gross profit over revenues into 100. So we have a gross profit, we have our revenues. Let's calculate the gross profit margin. So if I divide 48,000 over 240,000 into 100, I would get 20% as my gross profit margin. Next, we need to calculate our rate of inventory turnover for this business. The formula for which is cost of sales divided by the average inventory. And average inventory is opening inventory plus closing inventory divided by two. So first, we would calculate our average inventory, opening inventory, which is 27,000 plus closing inventory, which is 21,000 divided by two. So we get an average inventory of 24,000. Cost of sales is 192,000 calculated in part A. So we can calculate our rate of inventory turnover dividing 192,000 over 24,000 and we get eight times. What do you mean by rate of inventory turnover? Rate of inventory turnover means how many times or how fast is the business being able to sell its inventory during the year. A rate of inventory turnover of eight times means the business is buying and selling its inventory eight times during the year. Now this is a good ratio or a bad ratio it depends on the industry standards. This ratio will have to be compared to other firms in the industry or will have to be compared to the other years and then we can only say whether this is a good ratio or a bad ratio. Usually the faster the rate of inventory turnover better it is because a higher rate of inventory turnover means goods are being sold faster, lesser chances of dead inventory and less storage cost for the business. Next we need to calculate our current ratio. The formula is very simple current ratio equals to current assets over current liabilities. For our current assets, we have trade receivables of 20,000, closing inventory of 21,000 and bank of 2,000. So that makes up a total current assets in the business 43,000. And on the other hand, we have current liabilities, only trade payables, which is 16,000. So our current ratio will be 43,000 divided by 16,000. When we calculate, we will get 2.68 is to 1. It means the current ratio is 2.68 times the current liabilities in the business. Next, we have to calculate the quick ratio. Quick ratio is similar to the current ratio, except that in the numerator, we will be excluding the inventory value. The quick ratio formula is current assets minus inventory in the numerator and in the denominator, we will have the current liabilities. So the numerator would be trade receivables and bank 22,000 while the denominator would be same 16,000. So the quick ratio will be 22,000 divided by 16,000, 1.38 is to one. The next ratio is trade receivables turnover ratio. This ratio is calculated as trade receivables divided by net credit sales multiplied by 365 days. The trade receivables are given in this question as 20,000. The credit sales are not given separately. So we will assume that the revenues given are the credit sales for this question. So 20,000 divided by 240,000 multiplied by 365, we would get 30.42 days, which is equivalent to 31 days. Remember the turnover ratio, the trade receivable turnover ratio and the trade payable turnover ratio are always rounded off to the next day. In the same way, trade payables turnover ratio is calculated as trade payables upon net credit purchases multiplied by 365. But there's a catch here. The purchases are not given directly. 
revenues are given so we were able to calculate the previous ratio but purchases are not given so we will have to calculate the purchases first i told you the formula for cost of sales is opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock in this formula we have everything except purchases so we will use the formula of cost of sales to arrive at the purchases so purchases will be equal to cost of sales plus closing inventory minus opening inventory which will be 192000 plus 21000 minus 27000 so 186000 so 186000 will be the purchases and then we can calculate our trade payables turnover ratio as 16000 divided by 186000 multiplied by 365 we will get a value of 31.40 which is equivalent to 32 days so we calculated all the required ratios next we need to compare the calculated ratios to the given ratios for these three categories gross profit ratio rate of inventory turnover and quick ratio and comment on the change meaning what could have caused the change in the ratio so here i have written the previous year ratio and the current year ratio side by side and we will compare and then write, try to write the reasons for the change and trust me it is not difficult to write the reasons for the change in ratio you just need to understand the way the formula is made you need to understand the numerator and the denominator and then analyze the ratio for example gross profit margin has changed from 15% to 20% So now you have to think what is the gross profit margin formula made up of it is made up of the gross profit in the numerator and the selling price or the sales in the denominator and gross profit is equal to selling price minus the cost price so the only way this ratio can change or increase in this case is that the selling price has risen compared to the previous year or the cost price or the cost of sales has fallen these two reasons would lead to an increase in the gross profit margin there are other reasons also why gross profit margin could have changed these are a little complicated reasons for example there can be a change in the sales mix it is possible that the business is dealing in more than one product so in the previous year they've sold more of the product with lower profit margin while in the current year they've sold the product with higher profit margin in more quantity and hence there is an increase in the overall gross profit margin but i would suggest to stick with these two points especially if only two reasons are asked for an increase in gross profit margin if more reasons are asked for then you can also say that a change in sales mix has happened okay the next is rate of inventory turnover 5.33 times in the previous year and in the current year 8 times i have already explained in this video that this ra this ratio explains how many times the business is buying its inventory and selling it how fast is it selling so there are two major reasons here first is that the business has started maintaining low levels of inventory okay it is just buying enough to sell over just next few days it is not interested in maintaining a lot of days sales as inventory and the second reason could be that the sales of the business or the revenues have started to rise and hence it's being able to sell its existing inventory faster so two possible reasons first is lower levels of inventory being maintained and second there is a rise in the sales quantity or rise in the sales volume and finally we have the quick ratio the quick ratio has increased from 0.32 is to 1 to 1.38 is to 1 so in the previous year the quick assets were lower than the current liabilities they were just 0.32 times the current liabilities but in the current year the quick ratio has increased to 1.38 is to 1 in other words it the quick assets have become 1.38 times the current liabilities of the business and obviously the current year ratio is much better because the ideal ratio for the quick ratio is considered to be around 1 is to 1 so what could be the reasons for this change see understand the numerator and denominator again in the numerator we had the quick assets meaning the trade receivables the cash balance or the bank balance there could be a rise in any of these balances and as a result the quick ratio has increased and in the denominator we had trade payables so it is possible that there's a drastic fall in the trade payables and hence the quick ratio has increased so the possible reasons could be increase in the quick assets like trade receivables and bank balances or a fall in the current liabilities like trade payables so i hope this video was useful for you and you've understood the ratios even better 
If you enjoyed the video, please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Many more videos on other topics are also being uploaded in the coming weeks before the next board exam. If you have a doubt in any of these ratios or in general in the ratio chapter, you can feel free to comment below. I will revert back with the answer and I will see you soon in the next video.